Hi everyone, before I start this video, make sure that you are a part of my Discord server by joining the link in the description box below. And in this video, we'll be going over A-Level Accounting 2025, May-June, Paper 2 to Question Number 3. This is Paper 2 which consists of 4 questions, 2 of them will be of 30 marks and 2 of them will be of 15 marks and the total time limit for the paper is 1 hour and 45 minutes. Since question number 3 is of 15 marks, ideally you should be spending about 17 and a half minutes in order to solve this question and in this video as well, we'll be attempting to solve this question under 17 and a half minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. Zach had not maintained full accounting records for his retail business. He has provided the following details for the year ended 31st December 2024. We have the value for purchases and the value for returns outwards. Returns outwards is just the purchases returns. Then inventory levels increased by 2730 during the year ended 31st December 2024. So what this means is that the closing inventory is higher by 2730. So we can consider the opening inventory to be zero and this will make the value of closing inventory to be 2730 because the value of closing inventory was higher by that amount. Then Zach's policy is to sell all goods to achieve a gross profit margin of 40%. So gross profit margin is just going to be gross profit divided by revenue times 100 and this will be equal to 40. Let's take a look at the first question. We need to calculate the revenue for the year ended 31st December 2024. So we can just solve this equation, but instead of gross profit, we will have to record revenue minus cost of sales because that is the formula to calculate our gross profit. And before that, we'll have to figure out the value of cost of sales as well. Or if you find another way easier, then gross profit margin just means that out of the total revenue, 40% value will be for the gross profit and the remaining value will for the cost of sales. So the remaining value in this case will just be 60%. So we can just formulate an equation from this side as well. So that will just be cost of sales equals to 60% of our revenue. Now let's calculate the cost of sales. Uh, we are considering the opening inventory to be zero. Then we add the purchases, which is given to be 82,980. We have our purchases returns, which we always subtract, so minus 1,050. Then we need to subtract the closing inventory as well, which in this case is 2,730. Then this should be equal to 60% times revenue. Now the value of cost of sales will be 82,980 minus 1050 minus 2730 which results in 79,200. So that will be 60% of revenue. Then our revenue is just going to be 79,200 divided by 60% because when this goes to the other side it goes in our denominator. So our required value for the revenue is just going to be 79,200 divided by 60%, which results in the value of 132,000. That is all for the first part. Let's move towards the next one. We have some additional information. Zach is not certain how much the business is owed by its credit customers at 31st December 2024. So this just means that he is not certain about the total amount of our trade receivables. The following information is available. At 1st January, credit customers owed 11,880. So this is our opening balance of the trade receivables. Then credit sales are 75% of the total sales. We've already calculated the total sales, which was 132,000. Now 132,000 times 75% will be the credit sales, which results in the value of 99,000. Then bank statements show that 96,900 was received from credit customers during the year ended 31st December 2024. Some credit customers were given a 5% cash discount for prompt payment. Zach estimates that 20% of all receipts from credit customers were made after deducting the cash discount. Okay, so 20% of this value, let's figure that out first, 96,900 times 20%, which results in the value of 19,380. 
So this 19,380 was paid after allowing a 5% cash discount. So let's write it down. So it means that this is only 95% and 5% was the discount allowed. Let's figure that out. 95% of the value is 19,380. We're trying to figure out the discount, which is allowed in this case which is 5%. So just utilize the unitary method, 19,380 divided by 95% times 5%. This results in the value of 1,020. That is our discounts allowed. Now we need to calculate the amount owed by credit customers at 31st December 2024. So this is just indirectly asking you to prepare the sales ledger control account. Let's do that. Sales ledger control account because we're trying to figure out the closing balance of our trade receivables now sales ledger control account is a trade receivables account which is an asset account so the opening balance will be on the debit side and the opening balance of trade receivables was given right here 11,880 then any values that will increase the trade receivables will be recorded on the debit side because increase in asset goes on the debit side. Then any values that will decrease the value of trade receivables will go on the credit side. Now, the first item we can record is our credit sales. Whenever we make credit sales, it will definitely increase the value of trade receivables. So this value of 99,000 should go on the debit side. So we have credit sales. Then we have the amount that we received back from the credit customers. Whenever we receive back the amount, it will definitely reduce the value of trade receivables. So the 96,900 will go on the credit side under the heading of bank. Then we have calculated the discount allowed as well. Whenever we allow a discount to our customers, it will definitely reduce the value of trade receivables because we will no longer be getting back this 1020. So it will also go on the credit side under the heading of discounts allowed then we just need to figure out our closing balance which will appear on the credit side for this we need our total from the debit side first that's 11,880 plus 99,000 which results in 110,880 Then for the closing balance, it will be 110,880 minus 1020 minus 96,900. This results in the value of 12,960. So that is the amount owed by credit customers at 31st December 2024. Let's write it down. Amount owed by credit customers at 31st December. 2024 will just be our closing balance of 12,960. That is all for the second part. Let's move towards the next one. We have some additional information. Zap would like to improve the credit control of his business. We need to identify two ways other than allowing a cash discount in which credit control can be improved. So credit control is a way of maintaining a lower value of trade receivables. So the very first thing is that we can encourage prompt payment from our credit customers and we can do that by charging interest on overdue accounts. If you do not pay me back within maybe one month or two months, then you'll have to pay additional interest of 2% or 5%. So Zach can introduce a policy, something similar to that. Let's write it down. Charge interest on overdue accounts. Then the second way uh, he can improve the credit control of his business is to set credit limits in individual cases. You should not be allowing large amounts of credit sales. So maybe you can see that the maximum amount of credit sales that I can allow is 20,000 or 20,000, depending on the individual customer and their history of paying back to our business. Let's write it down. Set credit limits. in individual cases. All right, that is all for the third part of this question. Let's move towards the next one. 
we need to see two benefits of improving credit control. So the very first benefit of improving credit control is that we will receive money back from our credit customers in a shorter period. That will definitely improve our liquidity. Let's write it down. May improve liquidity. Liquidity is just the cash position of the business. And since the credit customer will pay us back quicker, it means that our business will now have higher cash holdings. Then another benefit of improving credit control is that it will also reduce the risk of irrecoverable debts. Let's write it down. Reduce the risk of irrecoverable debts. Because by charging extra interest on overdue accounts and setting credit limits, we are not allowing any customer to take a very large amount of credit sales and that will automatically reduce the risk of irrecoverable debts, which is the risk of credit customers not paying our business back in time. That's all for the fourth part. Now for the next one, we have some additional information. Zach has decided to prepare full accounting records in future using a computerized accounting system. However, he is concerned about the security of data. We need to see three ways in which the security of data can be ensured within a computerized accounting system. The very first way is to use strong passwords. Let's write it down. Use strong passwords. Then we also need to restrict access to data. We should not be allowing all of our employees to go over all of our financial records. That should only be reserved for a few of the staff members, maybe the staff who are working in our finance department. Let's write it down. Restricted access to data. Then another way to ensure the security of data is to install antivirus packages so that your accounting system may not be hampered by any viruses. Let's write it down. Install antivirus packages. All right, that is all for the fifth part of this question as well as the entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure that you like the video and leave a comment below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.